Woof. I made a video a while back showing off my visual configuration for Twilight Princess, but I never showed how I got Twilight Princess to look this good, so now I'm amending that. Now, for starters, no, I'm not doing this on a Wii or a GameCube. The only way to make Twilight Princess look this good is to emulate it on the PC, and no, you can't just pop the Wii disc in or the GameCube disc in and install mods onto the disc. That may sound obvious to you, but many people, myself included, used to think that that was how it was done. If you feel uncertain about emulating, then feel free to check out my other video where I explain some of the legalities of emulation and when it is allowed or not. However, let's delve right into these settings. First off, you need to have the latest version of Dolphin and an ISO of Twilight Princess, preferably the GameCube version, as it is easier to use with an Xbox controller and is the only version that is supported by the Hamasaki mod. The links to most of these things will be in the description below. Now, if you're using an Xbox controller or a PS3 controller for this game, and you don't yet know how to configure it to work on this emulator, here are the settings that I like to use. Once you have Dolphin open, you need to click on the option in the toolbar that reads Controllers. A screen will now pop up. Under the section titled GameCube Controllers, you need to click on the option for Port 1. Set it to Standard Controller. And then to the right of that box, you need to click on Configure. Here is displayed my settings. I use a PS3 controller. It is configured like an Xbox controller. And really any controller would work for this. Then you want to save and apply those settings. Once that is done, you want to go back to the main page for Dolphin. And then click on Graphics. You can change the settings to how you like. However, I'll go over the best settings to use later on in this video. So just head over to General. Change your full screen resolution to auto, your aspect ratio to force 16 by 9, and then head over to the first enhancements bar. Skip all other settings for now, and change your internal resolution to auto, window size. Now you save those settings and boot up your game to see if it works. If it works, then keep on following this video. If it doesn't, then fiddle around with some settings, or check to see if you have done everything correctly. Now you will want to go into the description of this video, and click on the link titled Hamasaki Mod. This will open up a website showcasing a mod for Twilight Princess by the very talented Hamasaki developers. To download this mod and their texture pack, you want to click on FAQ. Once there, the first question they answer should be where to actually download the mod. You want to click on the link shown there and you will then be brought to their Megashare site. There should be 5 files there. Keep in mind that if you are using the Wii version of Twilight Princess, then you will need to download the Ishiruka build which will also be linked in the description, and then both of the files on, on this page that include the name Wii. If you are using the GameCube version, however, you will want to download the file entitled hamasakifxsuite.zip, and then either one of the files that contain the name MGC. The PNG file has better textures than the DDS file, but requires more time to download and more powerful hardware to run. The hamasakifxsuite.zip file that you just downloaded contains the shader presets for Twilight Princess while the NGC file contains the textures and the build for Twilight Princess. You will need to open up both of these files. Now, open up the NGC file, and you want to extract the entire file to your documents, or wherever you want the folder to be. Now, open the folder that you just extracted, and have a read of the text file that is included, so that you can know how to install it if I miss anything. Now, open up the folder called Build, and then click on the SYS folder, then Shaders, and then Post Processing. Now, open up the Hamasaki FX file that you downloaded earlier, and then the folder inside of it, and then the Shaders, and finally the Post Processing folder. You want to copy everything inside of that folder into the folder that you opened earlier, and now you have the Shaders installed onto your computer. Go back to the Build section of your folder, and click on the software called TPHD version 1.0.2 or any other version. This will bring up the Hamasaki developers configured version of Dolphin, which allows for texture packs and shader packs to be installed. You need to link Dolphin to your folder containing your ROMs, but once that is done it is back into the settings, because now we are making Twilight Princess look beautiful. Feel free to open up Twilight Princess to take a look at the game before its graphics are completely overhauled. Keep in mind that you need a really powerful graphics card to run the settings that I'll be showing you. 
However, there are a few settings in the menu that allow for the game to run well and look better on even lower end systems. Now, in the Hamasaki Dolphin menu, you want to click on controllers again, just to make sure that your settings are still there. If they aren't, refer to earlier in this video for help. Now, close that menu and click on config. Turn enable dual core, idle skipping and cheats on, and then set the CPU emulator engine to JIT Recompiler. Next, go to the audio tab and set the sound settings to DSP LLE Recompiler. Now, close that menu and click on graphics. Here is where it really begins to depend upon your system. However, you have to set the back end to Direct3D12. Now do the resolution settings that I showed you earlier on in the video. Next, go into enhancements and set the anti-aliasing to ADEX MSAA if your GPU can handle it. Next, configure your anisotric filtering to whatever your GPU can handle. Under that, you want to turn on disable fog. Now, in the section titled texture scaling, you want to set the texture scaling mode to hybrid and then the scaling factor to anything between the range of 2 to 5x. Now head over to the post processing tab. You want to go to the option that says to add shader and then you want to select the shader preset that you want to use. Personally, I use vanilla ultra, but really you can have it look however you want. Then you need to add the shader. In the options section for the shaders, you are able to customize how you want the shader that you chose to look, but I'll leave that up to you. Now, under the shaders toolbar is a configuration for how it will render those shaders. You want to set your post processing trigger to on swap, otherwise the map will be glitched and will display a smaller version of your screen. Now head over to the hacks toolbar and select all of the items on the embedded frame buffer section except for fast EFB access. Now go to the advanced toolbar. Under the utility section select load custom textures. If you want to use a Hamasaki custom texture pack, which is the one that I recommend and personally use, or a different texture pack. Now select Cache Custom Textures on GPU and turn on Load Custom Material Maps. Now, under the miscellaneous section, click on Enable Progressive Scan. And now you are done. Close that menu and make sure that you have all of your options set to what I have told you. And now try out Twilight Princess. If you did it like I did, then for a few seconds as the game starts, there should be black bars on the bottom and right sides of the screen, which is perfectly normal. If it doesn't work for some reason, then make sure that your backend is set to Direct3D12 or that your graphics card drivers are working fine. And that is all. Now you have Twilight Princess looking like a modern day game. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you learned something new today or solved any problems that you were having with tinkering this game. A big thank you goes to the Dolphin developers for creating such an amazing software and to Ishiruka and the Hamasaki developers for allowing us to make our old favourites look even better. And a massive thanks goes to Nintendo for making such an incredible game. I hope to see you all continuing to tinker, and as always, feel free to ask any questions in the comments below. Have a great day.